Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. We've got a really cool car, one of my favorite sports cars that are out there. There's not a whole lot of them out there. We're going to put it on the lift and check it over and find out what's wrong with a few of the complaints on it right after this. Yes, I know the keys are still in the car. Okay, so this is a really cool car. I've seen several of these on the road, and every time I see one go by, it's just I just watch it the whole way. It's like, wow, that is cool. It's a 2006 Cadillac XLR. Customer brought it with a couple of concerns. I'm going to show you guys what I found, and also some information on the pricing on the repairs on this, which even shocked me. I was like, whoa. Let's take a look around it. Open the hood, look inside. I'll show you some of the things that I found there. And also we'll put it on the lift, and let you guys see the underneath. This has the wonderful North Star V8. And no, it doesn't get blown head gaskets and have all those issues. Those are solved by now on this car. It does have variable valve timing is something that's kind of new on the North Stars. But one of the things the customer was concerned about on this car was a coolant leak. So we pressure tested it through the reservoir and for the longest time I couldn't find anything. I didn't find anything dripping. And there's a large cover that goes on top of the radiator. I finally removed it and I found what's wrong with this car. The radiator side tank is cracked. Let me show you guys. You guys see that where I can get my screwdriver in it? It's all wet around there. Cracked right there on that rib and it just leaks coolant down. That one was kind of tough to find, but that began the dilemma of me being shocked by the prices on this. Now I know that the structure and the underneath of this is based on a Corvette. The engine's not Corvette, that's Cadillac. You have to go to a XLRV to get the LS based motor or the LS motor. This is a North Star. But I thought, okay, his radiator's cracked, you know, three, four hundred bucks, parts and labor, it looks easy to change, and he can be back on the road. I couldn't have been more wrong. After I tallied in the almost five hours of book time it takes to replace this radiator, and the cost of the radiator, $325, this guy's almost at 800 bucks for a radiator. I was like, whoa, that went really high really fast. I was really shocked, but that's... That's just the beginning, guys. So I called several different parts stores and I said, hey, I need a radiator. I need to, I figure it's a Cadillac. Surely enough, they have a radiator. Wrong. So I checked Whirlpack and it showed unavailable. So I actually called them and they're like, yep, no go. You're not going to get one from us. And I was just shocked. I was like, not only is this really high, but I can't even get one. That's weird. It's, it's not like that I'm working on a Lotus or a Ferrari or something. It's a Cadillac. Finally, I got a hold of CarQuest, where I buy a lot of parts from, and they worked with me, and they said, we got some connections, and we can have you one tomorrow. And even it was going to be tough for them to find one, but they found one, and it's going to be here tomorrow. So the price was a lot higher than I thought it would be, and the availability of parts was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. Some of these things are shocking to me. I haven't had a lot of these in the shop, and it's just like, it's a radiator. Shouldn't that be a GM off-the-shelf part? Apparently it's not. Hi, Razor. Is that a custom part for that engine? It must be, because everywhere I looked it said unavailable, out of stock, gone. You're out of luck. But that is definitely cracked. That is not repairable. It's going to eventually just blow out, so it has to be replaced. I got the go-ahead on that. So before we get this on the lift, I thought let's take a look around the car and let you guys check it out. It's a really awesome looking car. I love, I like the looks of this car better than any Corvette made. That's just my opinion. 
It's got sharp angular lines. It's a nice thin hood line. It has retractable roof, roof, however Hoovy says it. As you can see, this is reminiscent of a Corvette. It's the same door setup, opening and closing. But I found the seats to be kind of narrow. I'm a bigger guy, and they're quite, a th quite thin seats with a very large center console. It's very wide. For Mrs. Wizard, she may fit in it just fine, but... Mrs. Wizard does fit in here nicely. But it's pretty simple. It's not chock full of gadgets. It's along the lines of a Corvette as far as equipment in the interior. But again, it has the push button open and close, just like a Corvette. A lot of similarities with the Corvette because it is based on one. And we'll see that when we get it up in the air here in a little bit. Got nice leather seats. It's not a sparse interior, but yet there's not a whole lot going on either. It's fairly simple. And I actually kind of like that. So we'll take a look around the back. It has nice square, sharp. I love the sharp lines on this. Very, very sharp lines. It's, there's no bones about it. It's... They mean business when they put the body crease lines on this. I like that this line goes all the way to the front, uninterrupted. If you get an angle on the camera, you can see it goes all the way to the front. It's really cool. To me, the back end is kind of reminiscent of a Lamborghini Gallardo, the way it's blocky and square and... Down the other side, and I really like the color. I like silvers whites, golds, light colors. I don't really care for dark dark blues, blacks, and things of that nature. These are, they stay a lot cleaner a lot longer. Nice colored wheels, dark gray. But anyways, I guess we can get ready to get this thing up on the lift. I'd like to let you guys take a look underneath. Okay, let's take a look underneath. Here's the radiator that has a cracked side tank. You can see it better from underneath here. Just kind of just sits in there. I checked the side tanks on the bottom, but I noticed some wetness right here. And I traced that up and that's where I found the cracked side tank. We'll get that taken care of soon. But the next thing I noticed is this leaf spring is coated in oil. The oil pan's coated in oil. And that's common for North Stars. It seems like they all do that. In order to take care of this issue, all this oil everywhere, we have to remove the oil pan because that's actually what's leaking all around the oil pan. And resealing the oil pan is just a simple gasket. But all this is in the way. This large cross member, the cradle, I guess you could call it, which the motor rests on, you can see these bolts here, would have to partially drop it while holding the motor in place up top to get this oil pan out. And by the time he pays all the labor and parts and everything, it's 800 a grand. I was like, wow, boom, another grand. Break out another thousand, as they say, when you buy a boat. That's what we're doing here. We're breaking out another thousand to take care of that. So let's check the brakes. And they look like they've got about 30 to 40% life left. They still got some time. Nothing's loose there. Check the sway bar link. Nice and tight. Same situation on the brakes here. Sway bar link's tight, the wheel's tight. We'll move our way back, and as you can see, the whole bottom of this car is basically a Corvette. The transmission is not right here. It's back there, just like a Corvette. And here's where the seats go, the floor pans, and they're all bonded 
panel so you can see the big blobs of bonding here. Kind of like the Lotus Evora that we just had on the lift. It's bonded together in a very similar fashion. And there's the, the drive shaft tube that goes above this panel and ends up right here at the transmission. The transmission's in the back along with the rear differential. Kind of a transaxle, I guess you would call it. So let's check the brakes and finish checking it out, and then I'm going to show you guys the last issue that he had. The brakes probably have six months to, maybe about six months left, and there'll be time for brakes on this one. Wheels tight, and we'll check the brakes over here. Same scenario, the wheels tight. I can see that his shocks are just starting to have some seepage. I'll let him know about it, but I don't think they need to be replaced right away. Here's the exhaust. Two big canisters sitting there in the middle, where a pair of flow masters should sit. That's what I would put on here. I don't see anything other than the, maybe the shocks at some point or brakes here in the future. Everything, everything else looks pretty good. The last issue that this customer had was that his fuel gauge will occasionally just drop. It'll be like at three quarters or whatever, just empty, all the way to empty. So that brings up a check engine light with a code for the circuit on the, the fuel level sender. It happens to be the passenger side. There are two tanks on this car. Here's a passenger tank and a driver's tank. There's only one fuel pump, which is in the driver's tank and it use, uses some sort of venturi action in the passenger tank to transfer fuel back and forth. There was two codes, one for the circuit here, for the sender, and there's a second code for fuel transfer problem. Well, the truth of the matter is there is no fuel transfer problem. The computer uses the fuel gauges left and right to kind of monitor what's going on between the two. And it has one tank, the passenger tank, because all of a sudden dropped to empty, and the computer's like, what the heck just happened here? Is there something going wrong? Where did all the fuel go? Well, the fuel didn't go anywhere. It really didn't. It just looks like it did because the gauge just... There's some flat spots, or some dead spots on the gauge, and that's what's causing those two codes. Here's another thing that really shocked me. I figured we would drop this tank, and we have to replace the whole unit, the fuel sending unit and everything, if we're going to go through all that trouble. I figured, okay, 600 bucks, 800 bucks. That's not even half of it, guys. The job pays by the time with diagnosis fees and the removal and installation is 13 hours for one tank. If you want to take the other tank out, it's another 13 hours. There is a lot of stuff that has to come loose and come out of the way to get these tanks down. I quoted the guy 1500 to 1750 to do one side. And he was shocked on the phone. He was like, what? And I told him, I said, hey, I'm just as shocked. I can't believe this. This is crazy. He said, no, I'm just going to have to live with the fuel gauge acting up. He said, I will get it fixed here in the future, but right now is not the time with the stuff we're going through with the economy. And he said, that's going to have to wait. And I don't blame him. Man, that's crazy. But that's just the way it is. Underneath here is a Corvette. And I guess it's Corvette prices are... Really, the prices that I gave him today were Lotus prices, Maserati prices, on a Cadillac. I just was like, wow, that's just what it takes to do the jobs on this car. Well, before I drop this thing down, Mrs. Wizard made a comment when I put it on the lift that it seemed awfully far back, or it didn't seem like it was centered on the lift. And based on the arms that I have and where the jack points are, that's what you have to do. There's a small little hole here, and there's one right here. And that's all you have for jack points. They're in odd locations. They're almost centered in the middle of the car. You would think it would be way back here and way up there, but no. It's all along this little frame here. So that's what we had to do. I tallied everything up as a full estimate to do everything that needed to be done to this car. And after sales tax is added, we're gonna be at $3,500 for a radiator, oil pan, and fix the fuel gauge sender. And I was pretty shocked. 
I really like these cars, and I still like them, but I'm shocked by the repair prices, even as I'm the one setting the prices. $3,500 is Maserati money, guys. I don't, I don't know. If, I'm, if I know going into a car purchase, this is Maserati money, you might as well get the Maserati. I don't know. I may still get one of these cars. I really, really like these cars. I just hate that it costs so much to repair them. Unfortunately, that's the name of the game. Like I said, underneath it's a Corvette. It's gonna have Corvette prices. So I'm glad you guys could follow along today. We could take a look underneath, figure out what was going on with this car and what it's gonna to cost to fix it. So understandably, the customer's just gonna replace the radiator. And I told him I totally agree with him. So that's what we're gonna do, replace the radiator. We've got it on order. We finally found one. Get that taken care of and he'll bring it back another day to take care of the next item and then the next item. If you're curious what kind of tools I use, check my Amazon affiliates link below. You guys have been buying lots of things off there and really appreciate that. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, go ahead and do that. We've got many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.